Hey guys, welcome back. Here's the Pulse with Willie and Al. Uh, if you're noticing, hey. we did some things a little bit different today, like no intro music, a little, uh, the banner looks a little bit different. Uh, it's because we are hosting this now. Well, I am hosting this now from Vermont. Uh, so Hey, uh, welcome back to the States. Thanks, man. So we are, we are back for a few weeks, um, helping the dad out. So uh, we are back in the States right now, but when we get back to Turkey, it's going to return to our normal look that we've got. So, uh, how's it going today, bro? How you doing? Good. Uh, you will also notice a uh, different background for me. I am dog and house sitting this week. Uh, so yeah. Uh, but also big, uh, word on the street is big Ray got some new knees. Yeah. He, well, he's got a titanium knee now. He showed me what Woo! went in there and I looked at that and I was like, holy shit. I can't believe what, what actually goes in there. So. Yep. Uh, but now we get to work on the rehabilitation, so we'll see yeah. exactly how that goes going forward. Wish him a speed, speedy recovery, and uh, we'll go from there. But let's jump into things, right? Uh, we've got Major League Baseball, some big news, which I, I know what you probably weren't happy to, to see, but Mookie Betts breaks his hand with the uh, hit by pitch. Uh, did, did they mention how long it looks like he's going to be out for? Yeah, he's out for a couple of months. Yeah, like which is it's just going to be real sad for, for Dodgers fans in general. But I know a lot of Red Sox fans, like even when you have players go away, it's still someone you kind of follow for that and stuff. It's just sad to see that happen because we know what a great player he is, um, what a great athlete he is in general. So re really tough, tough break for the Dodgers with that, uh, as he was having a great season, you know, uh, or at least yeah, a, it's, a uh, solid like start. It looks like six to eight weeks, which should put them right back around like September stretch run. Okay. So, well, it looks like they're in in firm control of the division right now. We'll see, you know, if that has any shake up on that. But Yamamoto, Yamamoto also got put on the IL. I did for, not uh, see that. Yeah, what happened with yeah. that? Yeah, uh, I just had some shoulder stuff, which that's a little more concerning because at least with Betts being on the IL, like you can work around that. They the Dodgers have so much hitting that it doesn't really matter. Right. Yamamoto being hurt is, I think, a bigger issue. Um, I, it looked like it was just the minimum 15 days, but like, still. Still something to, to keep an eye on for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, other than that, hopefully the Dodgers are able to, to rebound from that. Not that I want to see them do that, but, uh, you know, for their fans, for their sake, hopefully they're able to, to rally around that. Uh, can we talk about one thing real quick? I know yeah. this is a little off topic. Um, I don't know if you've been following this, but one night, like I think it was like a couple of weeks ago, uh, the Mets, the New York Mets had Grimace throw out the first pitch as in Grimace, the character from McDonald's. Are you kidding? This story gets better. The yeah. Mets have been on a tear ever since. Yeah. That, what, they're they're like the best 15 story and baseball. four, right? At this point? Yeah. They're, it's just something insane right yeah, now. Doing like, very, very well. At, like at one point they won eight of 10. They won like six in a row. Like, yep. They've been killing it, just, just and they've been beating up the Yankees too. It's yeah, yeah. yeah. Garrett Cole the other night got rocked four homers, no no strikeouts. Like yeah, we'll, we'll definitely get to the Yankees in a minute here because yeah. that's something that needs to be brought up with with them for sure. Um, one thing but no, that, I just like I said, I want to got to give a shout out to our boy Grimace, like yeah, how, and holding it down since we were kids. Like how epic is that? Kind of cool. Yeah, All yeah. Right. Rocking the purple for Grimace today. You know, let's let's go. Let's go. There you go. <laughs> All right. Uh, next, we got uh, the Colorado Rockies um, with its first uh, pitch clock violation that ended a game. Very interesting yeah. to, to see how that uh, how that ended and stuff. But um, I, I really, you know, not not that it, it was going to happen at some point. It was inevitable. But I'm just curious, like in your mind, we've talked about it a few times. Like, how are you happy with how it's working? Is there changes that we think we should make to it? Or um, do you feel like because you had mentioned before that they had kind of implemented this long ago in the minor leagues and kind of yeah. tested it and seen how it, how the effects that it was going to have and then brought it up to the majors. I I think it's nothing but a great thing for, um, for baseball. I, in the minors, like a seven Oh five game means you can be done. You're done by like nine 30 now, like you're out, you're out. Like before there was no pitch clock, a seven Oh five game meant you weren't done till like 10 30 minimum. 
and I, I, I like it personally. I, I think it's great. Mm-hmm. So, um, and honestly, I'm shocked that uh, it has sooner. Um, I do remember it happening to the Red Sox in a spring training game early on, like the first season last season. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, and it, it's just kind of wild. Like, it's a wild way to end a game. And I, I think it will end a playoff game at some point this year. And I will be very interested to see how that like goes over. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing like the the lasting implications that it will have. And you know when the stakes are higher, of course it's gonna have something that's gonna come in uh that that's gonna have an effect like that. So uh very interesting to see. I I know we had talked about it before the call. Yeah. Just about with uh the Phillies and Tigers game, Spencer Turnbull, there was a uh, pitch clock violation but it was on the batter and he actually ended up getting called out uh, because he wasn't ready in the box in time and i'm sitting there watching i'm like why did he did they just call strike three on that but it's crazy the way it's implemented they're holding both of them accountable i think there should be more on the pitcher than that but uh especially considering he wasn't even on the rubber at the time that the batter was called out it was i don't know very wild I agree with that because it is easier for the pitchers to game that system mm-hmm. because like I, because I, I heard your dad talking about it earlier, like Turnbull's back was to the batter. Yeah. Yep. Like, see, you know what I mean? So like, that's not, you know what I mean? Like that's, but I, I respectfully, like I, I respect him for doing that though. Like if you know what the rule is and you know, there's a kind of a way around it. And like baseball, baseball is all about looking for every little advantage that you can you can grab. So the like Bill Belichick approach, baby. There it is. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. You, you got to know the rules. Trying. The the more you understand the rules, the more you know how yeah. to be able to to take advantage of them. Right. Yeah. Um, like you know, it's okay to film practices. It is. Like it, it, you know, like how else are you supposed to gain a leg up on the competition? Jeez. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Well, I I had. Uh, it's funny because we always try to do notes ahead of time to prepare for stuff. And I'm looking at my, my previous notes I had here about the guardian sport in the top record, which only lasted a few days. Uh, but uh, they were, they were actually one of the teams that people were talking about saying like, how good is this team? But I, I still feel from like our previous conversations that this is still a middle of the pack team. I wouldn't put them up there with the likes of the top five teams in the league right now that or at least the top five I consider right now. So here's the thing. I make the same joke about the Cleveland Guardians the last couple of years, and it's this. It's Jose Ramirez and a bunch of dudes. Mm-hmm. Like you just look at that lineup. Stephen Kwan is sort of becoming that dude and at like a limited capacity. Um, but really it's just Jose Ramirez and dudes. And here's the thing: legally, somebody has to win the AL Central. That's yep. a fact. That is a fact. Uh and it's, it's, I think it's either going to be Cleveland or Minnesota. Kansas City, like, is, like, weirdly good. Like, and, like, they're, they're going to go as far as Seth Lugo can take them, which I never thought I'd hear that, hear myself say that sentence. But, yeah. uh, but he's been yeah. playing very well, pitching very well yeah. this year. They, uh, they have a weirdly, they're weirdly good defensively. And they're just like, it's, it's a bunch of, it's a bunch of guys in a lineup that are just like tough to get out. Like, so. Yeah. Yeah, it's my dad's still holding out hope for the Tigers, but I don't see them coming out of the the central division there. It's too tough. They they have too big of a hill to climb right now, but who knows what will happen and how things can change. There's still a lot of baseball left this year. The thing is though with Cleveland right now, they're 8 games at up in in the in the division. Yeah. Like and like that's obviously you can come back from that, but like that's if you're Minnesota or, or Kansas City, like you got to start making moves now. Yeah, like you need to start chipping away at that lead because you do. You only have a finite amount of time left. Well, yeah. Like, you look a month from now. We're at the end of July. If you're still eight games back, like it's almost insurmountable at that point. Unless um, you're the Mets. Unless you're the Mets. The Mets can always blow that lead. Yeah. Don't really, ever forget. You need a grimace, right? Yeah. You need a grimace. So. Right. Um, I was going to ask you about the Yankees and the reason you had brought them up a little bit before, but it, it seems to me like they, they can win a lot of games, but they're not beating good teams. 
and when they face tough competition, like I, yeah, I think they they took one game from the Braves. They're they're getting beat up by the Mets now. Like it's just the the Red Sox play them tough, which is an interesting thing. Like the Red Sox always are going to play them tough. But even as you sit here and say like, oh yeah, I don't expect the Red Sox to be great this year, they're still competitive. They're not an easy out for teams, you know. And that that's not every game, but they're still a tough team to play, right? We're we'll talk about the Red Sox in a second because I I, I would like to spend sixty seconds just talking about watching the Red Sox this year and yeah. like. I think you're going to know what I'm going to complain about. But yeah, the Yankees right now, like, they're just, they have guys hurt. Like, Stan took his uh, his mandatory trip to the IL like he does every year. Uh, Rizzo's still out. Soto just coming back from injury. Like, Judge has been, the, the reason they're still in first place is Aaron Judge. It's just hitting home run after home run. And I, I, Honestly, don't know why they're still pitching to him. Yeah, what what they were out of the game the other night, and what did he hit a grand slam in the ninth? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like just don't pitch to that guy. Like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> now let's make it interesting, right? <laughs> yeah, like he has thirty home runs already, and it's not even July yet. Yeah, like that's he's on pace to like break his own American League record. Yeah, which is wild uh but yeah no i they got garrett cole back but he got lit up like a christmas tree against the mets four home runs and couldn't strike anybody out yeah like, that's not he, and the mets, respectfully the mets lineup isn't that good like they spent a lot of money in new york um, yeah yeah i mean the power of grimace can only take you so far but like good lord yeah, like right that's, but, a, that's yeah. a tough thing I know. I, yeah. No, go ahead. I was going to say our boy, Ellie De La Cruz, he keeps, uh, he keeps stealing bases and, and handfuls, which is awesome. Um, yeah. well, one thing that I feel like needs to be mentioned be, and just, uh, I want to, you know, obviously I was on vacation last week, but, uh, one of the things I was able to read was a little bit about, um, you know, the unfortunate news, the passing of Willie Mays. Um, yeah. You know, and, and I feel very similar when I read articles about Willie Mays to like how I f felt after Kobe Bryant's passing. And it, the reason I say that is not to compare the two, because I think they're very different, uh, but how much they meant to the sport and how much they meant to players within the sport. Yeah. And like, it, it just, it really put it in perspective that a lot of his peers or people that came after him considered him to be, quite possibly the best player to ever play the game and it's one of the, just yeah one of the greatest center fielders of all time like i i'll stamp i'll like i'll 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 die on that hill like he that man once that man is so good like yeah. and like he is probably one of the most single most iconic plays of all time 54 yeah. world series the the behind the behind the back catch and then, like, what's not talked about with that catch is the throw he makes after. Afterwards, yeah. Save a, save a run in a one nothing game. I think it's one nothing or 2-1 in the eighth. Like, You know what's crazy, too, is, yeah. like, you listen to some of his teammates talk about that catch, and I heard an interesting perspective from one of his teammates on it saying that, like, we didn't think it was that great of a catch because that's what he normally would do. Right, yeah. like, that's what you expected of him. So we didn't think the catch was that great, but it was the throw – that they thought was was the special piece of that play, um, yeah, just a just a wonderful ambassador for the game, and it really seemed like a lot of people. You heard about like, you know, they had people from Johnny Bench to Sandy Koufax, Ken Griffey Jr., all of these guys talking about him, and Willie McCovey, all all of the greats, mentioning how awesome this you know of of a player, but also a human being this guy was. So just a a really neat thing, and I felt like something we should it took me probably about an hour and a half to read all of the articles that they had on espn about him it was very very interesting and i felt mm -hmm. like i learned a lot about him from reading that one that doesn't get talked about enough um willie mays was this close to uh playing for the red sox this really? close so 1950 his contract is about to be purchased like 
Sox scouts are like, hey, we got like this guy, like, come on. Uh, and so this happened actually happened earlier with Jackie Robinson. And, and this is kind of a real theme, unfortunately, with the Red Sox that I don't think it's talked about enough is the rampant racism that that team had with Tommy Aki as their owner. Like Tommy Aki was very public about being like, nah. And so there's, and I think if I remember correctly, the contract was for like $4,000 for Willie Mays in 1950, because he makes, he, he becomes a rookie for the giants in 51. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and Yaki says, no, like (laughs) Yaki says, no, like, and that's, and then kind of the rest is history. And like the Red Sox are the last team to integrate and like, and it's by like a wide margin too. Like Pumpy's Green doesn't play for the for the Sox till 1959. Oh, that's like, that's almost a decade fucking, later. Yeah, that's 12 years after Jackie Robinson, which is fucking ridiculous. Yeah. Like, uh, so yeah, that's so I always think of Willie Mays first as like incredible player, uh, great statesman for baseball, and then I also think about like this close to being yeah. a Red Sox, this close. So. One of the uh, one of the special stories that I read, kind of Pete Rose talked about him a little bit, uh, and just said that like the first All Star game, he was sitting in his locker before the game, and he looks across, and there's Willie Mays like directly across from him, and he's like, I didn't want to talk to anybody because I was just nervous being there the first time, and Willie Mays got up to him, you know, came up to him and just said, Hey, you should have been the the starting second baseman, and he's like, that was all the admiration I needed you know uh to to say like you know i had made it right and it was just a very neat hearing kind of behind the scenes stories about him um from his crazy base running to throwing people out to joking around with the managers and all, all sorts of stuff that he was able to do um he he even i think he was talking with one of the catchers one time mid conversation and hit a home run and like finish the story when he came back around to home plate, <laughs> like it kind of yeah. kind of funny to be able to to feel that relaxed that you could act that way up there. But um, you know, definitely my dad's favorite player growing up, and just a a real good ambassador for the game. And honestly, uh, a real shot actually to, it, and this is so much the story of like guys in this era. Uh, he lost two years to military service, yeah. fifty two and fifty three. And he still finished with 660 home runs. And like to think that he he could have been the first to pass Ruth. Like, because he retires in 73, and Aaron doesn't pass. I think Aaron passes him in 74. Or maybe Aaron passes him in 73. I can't remember for some reason. But yeah, like, yeah, and like so many guys, like you think about like Ted Williams, like he lost years to world war ii and korea like yeah. and it's just like so much like the, that era like guys just being drafted and serving in the military and like very different time right yeah but like the stats that he put up like 12 gold gloves in center field like that's that's the most by a center fielder ever well, like do you know what's what's interesting is they had someone asking him about uh stolen bases because they at the time they were mentioning like oh jose canseco was going to be one of the 40 40 guys right and they asked him like do you think you could have done done something like that he's like listen i i could have stole a lot more bases but he's like i only stole them when it mattered for the team yep and like it really put it in perspective like this guy was all about the team could have cared less about his own personal statistics. Um, it's great to have success individually, but he understood the importance of having it on, on a team. Um, so just a really, really kind of uplifting way to be able to to read about him and, and find out all that, that he had to offer the sport. Uh, and, and, and kind of paved yeah. the way for a lot of people after him, you know. And, like, the guy, like, finished third all-time in war, like, wins above a replacement, which I – is wild because he's only six off like Ruth from all time. Yeah. And like he missed two whole seasons of baseball. Yeah. Like it was just wild. It was just absolutely wild. Like how good he was. Like yeah. And like the guy, like the guy won a World Series in 54. Like 
played in a, a bunch of other World Series, like always ran into the buzzsaw that was like the Yankees, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Uh, he did, and like, and I'm glad, like, everybody remembers him from his days of like playing for the Giants, but like, he did play for the Mets at the end, and he it, he did play in that 73 World Series against Oakland, and like, yeah, like he's he was kind of a shell of himself then, and it's like weird, but like, I'm glad that like if you like ask like 10 people about Willie Mays and what what team they think about him with, nobody ever thinks about him with the Mets, which is yeah. good, yeah, it's but like, it's... yeah. You know, a lot of guys you see come into the league that are very good. Um, you know, they talk about five tool players and like you know, some of them are like very good at certain things, but they were saying like he was the best at every one of those tools. And very rarely do you ever see a guy that not only are they a five tool player, but they're the very best at each one of them. Um, very interesting to to see that about him, but uh you know, also hope. to to get almost 3300 hits and have a career batting average over 300 like that's yeah. that's hard to do like you have to be really good to do that yeah cuz yeah. like even like they're guys at the end that like kind of tail off but like yeah that's just insane i think to me that's a wild stat but almost 3300 hits career batting average of 300 like yeah definite hall of famer for sure <laughs> yeah so yeah uh all right well that kind of wraps up for baseball and what we have unless there was anything else you wanted to mention before we go nah okay um in the nfl some interesting stuff happened we had and this is going back two weeks right so if some of you are saying ah this already happened yeah we we didn't we didn't have a show last week so uh t higgins he signed his franchise tender um i still think it's it's not going to mean much i think he's going to be gone after next year um, I think so too. Just, I mean, you look at some of the s- statistics. Yeah, he was injured last year, but Tyler Boyd uh, had more catches than him last year. Tyler Boyd's gone this year, but they drafted Burton out of Alabama. I think he's going to serve in as a, a really good um, complement to Jamar Chase, where they'd allow T. Higgins to walk. But it's just sad because we've seen the success and how that offense runs when when he's in it. Um, but again, these guys want to get paid. Right. I'm honestly shocked that they're not going to try to trade him because like Cincinnati knows they're not going to resign him. Like just trade him for at least some picks. Yeah. You get something out of it. Yeah. Sending him somewhere. Maybe you send him to new England or, you know, a a team that's definitely in need of a receiver. Right. Um, Yeah. Especially a bona fide number one. Like people have said it before, he could be a number one somewhere else. Now that remains to be seen. Right. If he's actually going to be that number one guy or if a lot of that was Joe Burrow being there. Right. Um, But, you know, we'll see. Uh, Yeah. But uh, Calais Campbell, he ends up signing with the Dolphins. That's kind of a a nice pick for them, especially as they're waiting for some of those injured pass rushers to come back and Bradley Chubb, Jalen Phillips. Um, So he's going to provide a nice veteran experience for that defense. Uh, be able to help them out quite a bit or at least bridge the gap between them being able to come back um but uh he was a big part of that baltimore defense last uh sorry he played for atlanta last year i'm thinking two years ago with baltimore where he was like he's still like he's 37 and last year at six and a half sacks that's that's still pretty impressive pretty impressive for his age right and if anything he still he has the wisdom to be able to hang in there with you know, and, and be able to absorb some of that contact from other guys, free up other guys to be able to go and get to the quarterback, which they don't measure those stats, but I wish it was something you could measure. Like, oh yeah, Aaron Donald didn't get a sack every time, but that's because he was getting double and triple teamed, you know, like, but yeah. his, the guy opposite of him was able to get rack up 10 sacks on the season because of it. You know, I, I wish they would track stuff like that because it's super important to, to understand the context of it. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, d- moving on. Also, we've Aaron g- Donald is still getting sacks, getting triple teamed. Let's talk about that for yeah, a Aaron, second too. Aaron like, Donald, even I don't care if he's retired, he's still getting sacks now. He, he's not even on the field. He's still terrorizing quarterbacks. They still have PTSD yeah. from him. I had to imagine, like when he announced his retirement, that quarterbacks around the league were like, "Thank God." Like, Kyler Murray's like, "I'm coming like, back." <laughs> I can sleep a little easier now. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Geno Smith is yeah. like. Ah, he's telling his kids, you know, that that big bad man's not coming to kill us anymore. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, he can't he can't hurt me anymore. He Rock can't. Hardy's like, hey guys, like that feels good. <laughs> really yeah. good. Uh because Aaron Donald is a is a he was crazy to watch, man. He was yeah just incredible. But um speaking of someone that I know you don't think is crazy to watch, uh Trevor Lawrence. Um so he's Whoa. the third highest paid quarterback in the NFL right now after his contract. And uh it's I think it's one of the few times that we hear people getting paid for things that they might do rather than what they have. And I, it's so interesting. And they've talked about this a little bit with the salary cap and possibly moving the quarterback to a special position within the salary cap that would be separate from the rest of the team, because I think it devalues a lot of things. I think it's part of the reason that the running back climate has declined in the way that it has. Um, yeah. I think there's also a reason you're seeing a spike in the receiver market, right? But the fact that you could be one of the most vicious linemen and you're only getting paid 15, 15 million a year or something like that, or you catch the ball yeah. and you're getting paid 35 to 40 now, or because you're the one running the offense and you're not even that great at it, you get paid 50 million now. So it's like, and yeah. I know there's issues with that, but I'm just kind of curious your thoughts on it um of of how you see if you think they overpaid for him if you think that's something they needed to do if you think there were better options out there what you're kind of what what you're feeling your pulse on it two things well first of all one the moment i saw that i remember sending it to you and just i couldn't type enough crying with laughing emojis i could not like i just my thumb got tired from tapping them after a while because it was so excuse my language so goddamn funny yeah that like trevor lawrence was gonna get joe burrow money yeah yep and one of them has been to a super bowl one hasn't yeah take a guess yeah <laughs> Yeah, and I understand, too, that, like, Trevor Lawrence, like, his first year in the league, he had Urban Meyer as a head coach, which, like, Hall of Fame coach. that's no problem. Yep. Yeah. Um, but, like, he's had, like, moments in this league, but, like, I understand that you have to pay him because, like, what else are you going to do? Like, if you're Jacksonville, it's either that or you start over, and, like, I just, ah, uh, man, like, he's – He's good for being nine and eight every year. Yeah. That's cool. Like, L let me ask you he's something. He's the Jeff Fisher of quarterbacks. <laughs> yeah, it's still a winning record, though. So, barely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let me ask you something, though, because we're obviously seeing big spikes in the way people are getting paid every year that comes by, right? Like, first it was like Jalen Hurts signed his contract and then Patrick Mahomes. And you could make the argument that like Patrick Mahomes deserves another restructure now because you know, he's a, he's won two Super Bowls, Right. And like now it's now he deserves more money because of it. Right. Is it two? No, he's yeah. three, three. Yeah. He's won yeah, two, two in a row though. Right. So it's yeah. like, Oh yeah. He deserves more, more because of this. He should definitely be. And if you, there's no argument, he should be the highest paid quarterback in the league right now by a long shot. I agree. Compared to what everyone else has done. Definitely. Right. And so you look at that. I'm wondering in my mind is if the Jaguars are being smart about this by paying him, you know, what is it? 50, 55 that they're paying him now. And then they know within the next two to three years, we're going to be looking at quarterbacks making 75 or 80, but he's already locked yeah. in at that 50 to 55 range. Then, you know, maybe they're making out on this. Honestly, I, I like when the Hertz contract got signed, I didn't have a problem with it. I didn't have a problem with the Mahomes one. It's even Herbert. I know I feel that, bad about uh that was the first one where i was like i don't know man like like i understand that your team kind of has all you like you have a the probably the second worst offensive line behind the Bengals. uh but like joe burrow makes it work how come you don't and again i get that joe burrow has jamar chase like i i, I get first of all for the record i get that like yeah. if i feel like if herbert had jamar chase he would be doing the same things but like also, like he just he's had like shitty head coaching, and like 
the, the Herbert contract was the first one where I was like, ah, I don't know, man. Like, I get why you have to do it, but like, doesn't feel good doing. And that's and that's how I felt with like Lawrence and like, I love Jared Goff. I do. I loved everything that he did this year. But like Jared Goff got paid too in a way that I was like, ah, I get it. But you got because like what are what are your other options? Like, and at least the Jared Goff contract, like I was like, oh, that number's not as bad. Like right. the the Trevor Lawrence contract was just like even the the Herbert one. I was like, all right, Herbert's at least talented. Like I've seen him do enough where I'm like, cool. This guy can this guy can throw it. Trevor Lawrence, there has never the only moment he's ever had in this league is is that comeback win against the Chargers in the playoffs. And, like, other than that, like, he's just, like, it's a pretty unremarkable career. Yeah. And I know you had said to start, like, you know, Urban Meyer, he's had a a a carousel of coaching changes, uh, offensive systems. But they do say, uh, and, again, I'm not a big fan of his, but they do say that in year three or four, Doug Peterson, like uh, in his system, this is when the quarterbacks are supposed to come into their own. So I just like, I like so. you had mentioned that his career has been pretty unremarkable and it, they're even drawing many comparisons. I was saying before through 48 starts to Daniel Jones, but you were even saying there's some comparisons to Mac Jones too, uh, in terms of statistics. Yeah. Those numbers are shockingly similar. Yeah. Like and not a good more, way. More similar than they should be. And now Mac Jones is his backup. So like, have fun with that, yeah, Mister Swag. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But like, honestly, like that's the thing is though is like, if you just like look at the the Jaguars death chart for like this year, like right now, it's not like the guys he's throwing to. Like, no offense to Christian Kirk, but like. <sighs> man like it's just it's kind of depressing yeah. like when gabe davis is your number two that's not good I don't that's, think that's like good. that's yeah i don't think it's gonna last long i think brian thomas is gonna take over that role pretty quickly um but yeah gabe davis i is, hope so uh, that doesn't that's... make me feel good at all gabe yeah I, and like the colts are gonna be better this year and like Tennessee's going to be the better. Texans are Houston's good. Yeah, like I don't know, man. Like I I hope that Lor like I hope Lawrence can pull some magic out because like he doesn't he's not a quarterback that makes people better. Cuz yeah. I to me that's like I'm, I'm always going to talk about talk about our lord and savior Tom Brady. Uh but like that dude made everyone better around him. Yeah. He did. Like he took guys like Dion Branch and made them really good football players. Yep. Trevor Wes Lawrence Walker, isn't doing that. Julian Edelman. Like there's there's a long list of guys that he was able to do that for. Yeah. The list that goes on and on. Like yeah, yeah I don't know. Uh like I good for him for giving that bag, but like I don't know, man. It just seems I saw that contract and it's just oh, not good. Yeah, I mean we should have not some good. more more news on uh, football within the next few weeks here because training camp's going to be starting up. They should dive in a little bit more in terms of stuff, which also the scary part of that is injuries will start to happen too. Um, but hopefully uh, everyone's yeah. able to start the season in, in good health and, and all of that. But uh, anything else you wanted to cover in the NFL? No, it's really a training camp starting soon, which I'm excited about. We'll, uh, which means we're getting closer to the start of the season. Uh, it means fantasy football starting soon. Um, I I, I kind of wanted to let you know. I didn't know if you knew this, but I uh, I'm gonna win our guillotine league this year. So if you want to just send me the money now, yep. Like I, I think I would just cut out the middle, man. Like and save up everybody a bunch of disappointment. Okay. So yeah, we'll start by telling yeah. the leader yeah. of the group, um, supposed leader. Yeah, tell him, and then we'll see how. It oh goes. yeah, it's yeah. On. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, later, John. I'm, I'm later. hoping. I'm really looking forward to fantasy as well. Uh, real excited for it. So, um, me too. Yeah, be in a couple leagues, and we'll we'll see what happens. But we'll cover some fantasy stuff hopefully within the next few weeks uh, as we get closer. 
Um, that way you got questions, concerns, anything like that, we can bring them up. Uh, but let's jump into trivia. The last trivia question we had uh, was which L.A. Dodger was the last to have 200 hits in a season? And I did not get this one right. But, Al, break the news to him. Who was it? Uh, our boy, Adrian Beltre, who has probably the sweetest swing I've ever watched in my adult life. And he played once he played one season at Fenway in 2010 and man it was a thing of beauty that season <laughs> oh man like I, I that team sucked that year but boy he hit so many homers over the monster it was great it was great yeah. so yeah and just recently elected hall of famer Adrian Beltre so oh, yeah okay well that's definitely good too yeah. uh we have a yeah. new question uh that we have it said who had the first hundred million dollar contract in the nfl um so uh, again we're focused just on the nfl in this one but it's who had the first hundred million dollar contract so uh and we'll be back when next week i think yeah. it will we'll go ahead and answer that for you guys but um yeah anything yeah. else you want to cover before we duck out no nah, man i think we uh, i think we got everything all yeah. right Listen, we'll be back again next week, guys, giving you some more content. But thanks for tuning in this week, and uh, we will catch you next week. Love you, brother. All right. Love you, buddy. Peace. Peace.